All right, just a little play, a little catch up from uh, what happened between videos. Um, added this ground in here. You could do it with uh, just one of the sprites. I had a box collider 2D, and then just copy it like crazy and stick it in a wrapper. And then I changed the pivot on this sprite here. And I added rigid bodies and colliders to, well, I didn't add colliders but to this one, but rigid bodies to all of these components. So in the sprite editor, I moved, whoops, hold on, bike. In the sprite editor, I moved this pivot from up here down to here. The reason I did that was because of the way I'm going to rig this thing. I'm going to rig it up where this body is hinged to the swing arm, and then the swing arm is hinged to the wheel, and the wheel is providing all the forces that push things. So change this pivot to here, and then uh, put rigid bodies on everything, and you'll be caught up. So, now we're going to add colliders. Uh, there's different colliders you can add. You can add circle colliders, wheel colliders, you know, whatever. Um, but here, we're going to add a circle collider for the wheels. Both of the wheels get a circle collider, 2D. The uh, swing arm is going to get a box collider, 2D. And the body is going to get a box collider, 2D. And it's automatically going to figure out the extents of where this stuff should be. If you don't like it, you can change it, but... Automatic's good, most of the time. Now, um, the other thing is the collision layers matrix. So right now, these two are colliding with each other. If I hit play, this is going to fly out in space uh, because the wheel and the swing on collide. So to change that, go to Edit, Project Settings, um, Tags and Layers, and Create a Bike Layer, and put all these components on it. After you do that, go to Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D, and then in the collision matrix, that layer you just created is going to have a little dot down here. So mine was bike. And I just said bike versus bike does not happen. So this collision matrix, if you're not familiar with it, you can uncheck what layers collide with which layers. So if I didn't want the water layer to collide with the UI, then I would just uncheck it. And then any collision between that would be ignored. So here, in our case, Bike versus bike does not happen. The bike layer does not collide with the bike layer. That'll prevent this circle from being pushed out of the way when this box hits it. So that's set up. Now we can add some uh, more functionality to this. So let's get right to it. Here, let's start with the swing arm. We're going to add two hinge joints. Two hinge joint 2D components. So, reason for this is we're going to hinge it on the wheel, and we're going to hinge the to the to the body here as well. So you can stack all the hinge joints you want. You can stack all the joints you want on any particular component. You can even put two wheel joints on the body that are used as suspension for the wheels. So uh, it doesn't have to be particularly like this has a wheel joint, and then this has a wheel joint, and then they're connected to other something else. You know, it, you can do whatever you want as long as it works. So, in this case, we're going to add two hinge joints. One is going to be for the rear wheel, swing arm, and the other one's going to be for the body to the swing arm. So, um, let's see, we're going to move this anchor. This one's for the wheel, so we'll snap the anchor. This is where the, the hinge joint is connected to the wheel. We're going to snap the anchor to the wheel origin there. And then we're going to take the uh, hinge joint for the body, and it's already in the correct position. So we'll make sure it's snapped back in there. And that's all there is to the swing arm. For the wheel, we'll add a hinge joint 2D so that it doesn't fall away. And we're going to hinge it to the swing arm. So what we're doing here is saying what's connected to what. If there's no joint on this wheel, the wheel is just going to fall away. But the swing arm is connected to it, so it's going to try and follow it. But there's no feedback to keep the wheel from rolling away. So we have to force the uh, the wheel to stay connected to the swing arm. So we'll make that connection there with the hinge joint 2D and snap the both of the anchor points uh, to the center here. For the front wheel, um, there's actually nothing on the front wheel. 
we're going to add a uh, wheel collider. I mean, I'm sorry, wheel joint 2D. And we're going to say it's for the front wheel. I think this is the correct way to do it. Let's see. Now, if you drag this little anchor out here, you'll see it's got this. And it's got a green line going up. That is the angle at which the wheel can flex on. So let's set this to about like 125 or something and put it right there at the center of the wheel. And let's see how that is going to work out when we get ready to go. Also on the body, we're going to want a hinge joint. Because remember, the swing arm is connected to the body, but the body's not connected to the swing arm. So let's take the hinge joint here, put the swing arm in there, and the origin's right there so we know it's in the right spot. And we're also, all this is connected here, so it's forcibly connected. But there's nothing saying that the hinge, you know, here can't do that number, you know, when it when all this hits. Because the wheel's going to hit the floor, and then this is just going to bow up straight up. Watch. See? So there's nothing holding this up. So you can rig up a nice, fancy, realistic shock in here. But the quick and easy dirty way to do it is just to add a uh, spring joint 2D and take the connected body as the rear wheel. And you want this hollowed out one up top, say like right there, and then the other one right here at the origin of the wheel. You want to set the distance, say this is the neutral position for the wheel in the rear. Make sure that this green line basically gets to here because it's going to try to keep this green line and this guy lined up and this green line and this guy so it's going to try to keep those two points and it's going to do that based on uh, these variables the dampening ratio and the frequency so you can look up the unity docs on what this means but these are your two controls to control how stiff the spring is and how fast it oscillates the distance is just the distance between these two points, the two anchors, that it tries to maintain. And with the wheel, so if we go back to the body, the, sorry, the, where is it? There it is. Wheel joint also is similar, but it has an angle constraint. So this angle here is, uh, it's, it's basically strapped to this angle. So it's actually a little tight. Let's keep it 127. Doesn't look like he's pointing upright. That's good. So it's stuck on this angle. It's doing the same thing with the dampening ratio and frequency, but it's it's stuck where a spring joint can, uh, like if this spring joint was, the wheel was not connected, the spring joint would just be like letting the wheel dangle down here while it's it sprang, you know, on it. No big deal. It tried to keep that distance, but it would be just dangling down here because of weight. Whereas a wheel joint, it'll act more like... Uh, more like this. It's dangling will look more like this. You know, it'll do more like that. It'll be stuck on this angle that you specify here in the in the wheel joint, which is in our case 127 degrees. Okay, so that's the difference between the wheel and the spring joint, essentially. The hinge joints are very straightforward, you know, they snap to a pivot and they try to stay there. So let's see what this rig does. It's probably gonna be a little flimsy. Yeah, that's pretty flimsy. Let's increase the frequency of the spring joint in the rear to from one to five and see if that makes a difference. It did. So you can take this wheel, pick it up and drag it and drop it around. It'll go places. The front wheel does the same thing. Oh, that's soft. That's uh, front suspension is way too soft. So let's go to the body. Where's this wheel joint we got here? Frequency up to five, how about? Try it again. That's a little better. There we go. Ooh, that looks fun. All right, so that gives us a basically a simple enough rig where we could start working with. So let's go ahead and add some controls and see what we can do from there.